if you're still bleeding, you're the lucky one. Cause most of us have feelings, they are dead and they are gone. We're setting fire to our inside for fun. Collecting names of the lovers that went around, the lovers that went around. And you caused it. You caused it You caused it I was scared of dentists in the dark I was scared of pretty girls and starting conversation And I lost my friend turning green Got the magician's assistant in their dreams uh, ooh, Oh, they come unstuck Laying and running down to the rim Taking away to the dark side I wanna be your left on mom I love you when you're singing that song And I get a lump in my throat Cause you're gonna sing the words wrong There's this movie that I think you'll like This guy decides to quit his job And it's for New York City And this cowboy is running from himself and she's been living on the higher shelf uh, ooh, Oh, when they come unstuck Laying and running down to the riptide Taking away to the dark side I want to be your left on uh, I love you when you're singing that song And I got a lump in my throat Cause you're going to sing the I just gotta, I just gotta know If you're gonna, if you're gonna stay You just gotta, you just gotta know I can have it, I can have it any other way Well I swear she's destined for the screen the closest thing to Michelle Pfeiffer that you've ever seen. Oh. Oh. Hey. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the happy hour. We're trying this new way of, like, fading in stuff and making sure our, everything is correct. But, um, yeah, it's a little bit wonky yet. But, hey. Uh, and we're not, And let's be honest. Let's be honest. We're not very good at this. No. So, I mean, you've added a layer of difficulty that was unnecessary. Complete. And I don't think it actually adds anything to the thing. But you, this is the thing. Christy's so good. She puts in effort when she needn't bother. <laughs> That's how good I am. Yes. Yeah. Although she does have her own personal slaves, so... Uh, no, I don't. I have people who uh, work okay. with me. Oh. And uh, those people... Well, they work with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you you pick some of the cotton, too, obviously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. <If> not... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh... I picked one head of cotton once, so I'm also one of the... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're really taking me to no, task for being middle management. she You've, yeah. got, you've got an assistant, haven't you? She's not doesn't work for. She's not a PA who's like an intern who's unpaid. She gets you know like a German wage for, which is like you know decent. It's not like British minimum wage. Oh, oh, oh! Correct. I am just, just correct. Yeah, that's just that's just a factually accurate thing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so anyway, I'm just gonna check my capitalism with your capitalism. So I guess we're equal. Well, it's not my. I don't own anyone. So, well, I mean, I mean German capitalism but, versus UK capitalism. So. 
Oh, well, not, yeah, but I'm when you're an American, so you've got no fight. fucking yeah. stand up. <laughs> I've got no dog in this fight, I think, well, is what you meant. <laughs> you're, not just that, but you're an invader. You're an invader. You're a, you're yes. a multi-time economic migrant, which means you are white, white genocide to the max. Yes, especially because I have no offspring. Well, what you need to do is you need to get some brown offspring, clearly. Yeah, I'll get on that. Anyway. That's why, I mean, I've always said, if I did have kids, they would have to be brown. I couldn't have a white kid knowing that white nationalists <laughs> would be okay with that. I couldn't, I'd, I wouldn't, to be honest, I'd hate that child. So basically, you're going to reject... I, just, I despise its existence. You're going to reject light-skinned women to spite Carl. Not just Carl, but Carl, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, is in there, yes. <laughs> I would have to, it would have to be a coffee-coloured baby. Because I couldn't truly love a white baby, just because I know like, it wouldn't be annoying. <laughs> it wouldn't be annoying fascists. So what's the point? I mean, I'm not saying you abort them just because they're white. That would be ridiculous. But no. you know. So also, you're mm -hmm. not wearing headphones because I can hear myself laughing in your house again. Well, I can hear myself. But I can hear me back through you. So you're not wearing fucking headphones either. That's a lie. But nice try. Uh, the whole "I'm rubber, you're glue" won't work this time. No, I actually can. I can hear myself bouncing back, so I don't know what you've got going on there, but I can actually hear myself. It's it's very, very faint, so it's not a problem, but, you know. Hmm. That's odd. I've got really good headphones. But, oh, maybe you're hearing what? me well, through the audio? No? Anyway, you've stumped me now. I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay. All right, anyway. Well, you've got to bear in mind, you've got to bear in mind, I am also watching football during this, so I'll be honest, you've not got 100% of my attention. <laughs> That's how you do every show. So, yeah. but especially always... this time because it's it's like international football. So, oh, okay. Is that more mm. exciting? Uh, I don't know because I'm not. I mean, it's Northern Ireland versus the Holland. So, I mean, hmm, I'm not sure. I give a fuck who wins, but I'm still <laughs> watching it. So. <laughs> That's kind of like if someone you know, like your partner, comes up and goes, "You want to you know get busy tonight?" Well, you know. I might not be into it, but we've got nothing else to do, so all right. Exactly. I'm watching I know it. it's business this time because it's Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, so I guess what we should do is, um, it's kind of hard to segue, to be honest. So uh, we've got a happy hour. Welcome, everybody. But we have just... It's, well, it's, it, that's the thing. Is it appropriate to even call this one a happy hour? Because there's yeah. nothing happy happening. I think the name is sort of now understood to be slightly ironic amongst the chat and the viewers. Okay, okay, but I mean, on the odd occasion that we might get a new viewer, I think it's worth pointing out that, you know, we rarely talk about stuff. Well, actually, that's not true. We do entire shows where it's just fun, but, but we, do, we do more shows that are entirely not off. Yeah, but it's usually fun. at the expense of some sort so, of inner nerd shitlord in that case. And they're usually doing something awful. Yeah. But, True, yeah. but occasionally it's like a mass murder or something. So, I mean, mm. yeah. And not... that's, by the way, that's not making fun of a mass murder, just talking about it and its social implications and such. Also, we rarely stick to an hour. So, it, almost never. Almost it, never. It's neither happy nor an hour. It's the most inappropriately no. named show on the internet. Exactly. Apart from, um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I was about to say The Thing Creep, but that's not a show or such as a <laughs> channel. But that, that works too. That's, yeah, completely misnamed. Like, Horseshit Weekly for two different reasons. <laughs> warm, warm horse shit weekly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. How do we, uh, yeah, the unhappy hour. So now we have to kind of emotionally well, well, segue I'll, here. I'll, well, I'll, I'll emotionally segue. Do you know when I've been talking about the Nazis in Germany and stuff and how, you know, they like to go around killing Jewish people? Yes. <laughs> it's not funny anymore, is it? Yeah. No. It's happened. definitely not fucking funny. Yeah. 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 I've also shared yeah, so that, that an article happened. on the rise of the of finding like white supremacist and neo-Nazi groups with arms and weapons. Yes, in yeah, Germany, Germany's, uh, yeah, Germany's looking a slightly scarier place. I think in general, the it's still a very civilized and nice place, but undoubtedly the fascists have been making a significant rise in recent times. And I'm not just ju I'm not just talking about like the AFD, although they very much are part of the problem. Um, but people who uh, like this piece of shit, who technically we should say, for legal reasons, is alleged to have killed two people and indeed planned um, a massacre inside the synagogue, which thankfully, because of reinforced doors, because that's necessary. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's the world they live. People live yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. The Jewish so, um, community uh, lives in. 
but th thankfully because of that uh, precaution that they took um it saved potentially dozens of people's lives um, Amazing. It, you know, there was it's 70 just... odd people in there at the time um so so, so in, in some small respects that's count our blessings in that regard yeah but even so uh we still had a, a multiple murder planned massacre on a german street by a white guy again yeah well, yeah, by yeah, white Nazi. Nazi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if we specified that it is an audio show. We don't have a picture of him. Um, and we no, don't want to promote well, him. And even if we, yeah, we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't show the fucker anyway. And I'm not going to name him because he's scum. And uh, I hope he rots for the rest of his life in prison. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that's that's a thing. Like the I like I like to joke about there still being Nazis in Germany because it makes me feel slightly better because uh, there actually are. So I like to, in in that kind of sarcastic way, big up the fact that most people in Germany aren't, mm. if that makes sense. But it's becoming less and less like um, ironic, I suppose, and more and more a bit too much on the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the world sucks. I can, yeah, I can it's definitely not... give myself back slightly. Okay. Just ever so slightly. Right. I'll check my audio. But as Mrs. Snarky says in the chat, very good description of our show. Christy and Kev talk about how shit the world is in between tech issues hour. Yes, <laughs> basically. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm going to switch That's you about... to not, yeah, monitor off. And no, I think now I can't hear you at all. So I think you have to be monitor um, and output. I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to talk and then maybe you'll hear my. Yeah, yeah we can know. still hear you. Yeah. Never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's basically still like freshman OBS here. Give us like a year of figuring this stuff out. Yeah, I can't help but feel that's still a bit over optimistic. Um, yeah, probably because they keep updating it, and with updates, there are all kinds of things that change. Oh, you know, I, I sh I'm sharing Indeed. my sound with you, and maybe I should not do that. Maybe that was the um, problem because uh, I was sharing I the screen. With you? Well, is there anything you need to show me on the screen? Well, just because it's pretty. But no. <laughs> okay, but you can. Well, you can share share the screen without sharing the sound, can't you? Yes, and then you will hear you yourself on the desktop. Yes. See, it's like a puzzle. So and I feel like a bit like Sherlock Holmes uh, from the IT department when these things come up because I've worked True, out. True, but did yeah. Well. Oh, sorry. No, go on. You, you finish your thing okay, before well, I go the, I've worked with computer scientists now developing software. So I've kind of learned nerds. how... Fucking yeah, nerds. nerds. And I've learned how they think and how they construct things. So when you have a technical problem, it's always a matter of el eliminating possibilities, like controlling for things. Um, just like, you know. So, yeah, I get really kind of like a thrill when I figure that stuff out. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I just this did this wrong. Now I can fix it. Well, a story that's not usually in our wheelhouse, which is funny and led to, I think, the greatest pun hashtag ever from yesterday. Are you aware of a thing called wags? A uh, wife of a wife or girlfriends? What? Yeah, wife, wives and girlfriends. Right. It's a, a, an acronym, obviously, uh, and it's basically a set of um, people who are married to professional sports stars, usually soccer players, but not necessarily. Um, so that that's what you need to know in order to actually get the thing that the pun is based on. Um, and there's a story here where two particularly prominent wags, because I I remember Britain before wags like were a thing. <laughs> Obviously, uh, football players had wives and girlfriends yeah. since they've existed. Um, but the wags as like a concept, as like a celebrity a unto themselves. Is, yeah, as, yeah, indeed, indeed, very much a social grouping in of themselves, themselves um, of you know. Uh, <laughs> undeservedly culturally relevant people if that makes sense not that they're bad people necessarily although some of them are um but just uh, they've got they don't do anything particularly so mm -hmm. i don't know why they're famous but anyway two particularly famous ones uh, colleen rooney married to uh, the footballer <laughs> Wayne Rooney, england on footballer. the england team uh, in, well, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. He's the, he was the leading goal scorer for England of all time. How dare well, you? Well, he didn't have a lot of competition. 
Yes, he did. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I just said what? that to wind you up. Oh, okay. I deliberately no, I said you're that. Offering to... a genuine, <laughs> you're offering a genuine opinion. I thought, well, that's a very strange take. Look, I know you're underwhelmed in certain of the, the finals competitions, but I think you're being very hard. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yes, and um, uh, oh, I forgot my fucking name now. Anyway, this is Vardy. Remember her first name? Um, who was married to ex England uh, footballer uh, uh, Jamie Vardy. Anyway, there's been a bit of a back and forth where uh, via a, pro uh, a process of elimination and sort of sleuthing on social media, Colleen Rooney found out that Miss Vardy, or Mrs. Vardy, I suppose, um, had been selling stories, pri private stories shared via Instagram or – not Instagram, um, some messaging service anyway. Okay. A private group between them. Uh, but like I say, but via a process of elimination – and sort of, like I say, sleuthing, sort of Sherlock Holmes-esque uh, uh -huh. escapades, mm -hmm. um, and sort of outed it. And it's been this big thing where it's blown up and they're airing their dirty lin linen in public about it all, and it's been an absolute shit show. But it led to, I think, the greatest hashtag ever, which was hashtag Wagatha Christie. <laughs> nice. That's good. Which is per literally yeah. perfect. I I, that, I, that is the peak of uh, of hashtag mess. You're dropping a bit, so I'm going to stop sharing in case it's pulling bandwidth for some reason on your side. But uh, I have two things to say to that. One, I think they should update it to like WAPs, like wife and girlfriends and partners, because it's kind of heteronormative. And then the other thing, which I think you'll approve of, Kevin. There are no gays in football. Don't be silly. Yeah. Yeah. They don't exist. So, um, and the other one is, I'm sure you're going to approve of this, Kevin, a little shout out to Sosh, who wrote in the chat, hi, all listening at work, penis. So a uh, little secret penis. <laughs> Back to Sosh. Whoa, 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 whoa. The punctuation in that sentence is important. Are they at work, penis? No. <laughs> or are they at work <laughs> Full on stop. a penis? No, they are. Full stop, penis. Oh, okay. Yes. So they don't work on a penis. No. Or with a penis. <laughs> listening yes. at work, okay. full stop. Penis, that, I mean, like full I say, stop. The pump, yeah, the, the punctual. Well, okay, you make it sound like a fucking uh, telegram. Uh, uh, S, yeah, you telegram. Yeah, <laughs> penis. Stop. Full snaps. Stop. Stop. Okay. Don't let him ever stop. Yes. That's All right. Blackadder reference. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So anyway, should we talk about the slaughter of Kurds? <sighs> yeah, that's kind of the obviously big story we've been not getting to yet but the big thing that's happened since the last time we talked well, we had to we had to bag the christie first let's get let's not bury the fucking lead yeah okay right um get our priorities straight here um so when we were what, what an array of stories we've done so far we've done n nazi murderer on the streets of germany wagatha christie slaughter of kurds yeah. that is a fucking emotional roller coaster people sorry You're guys well we don't know You're how to emotionally what? transition between segments, so sorry. We're don't apologise. They should be they should be grovelling at our feet for this level of entertainment. It's amazing. Uh, so when last we left the happy hour, it was uh, Trump had sold out the Kurds. He had on unilaterally decided to just move a bunch of soldiers around, as Kevin pointed out rightly. Not a single U.S. soldier is coming home because of this move. And today, yeah, so the, his old yeah. rationale of like, oh, we've got to bring the troops home. Not a single one is going home. Right. They've just stepped aside to allow the Turks to slaughter the Kurds, which is what they've been wanting to do for years. And which Trump, by the way, and I'd forgotten about this. I've, I should have mentioned this last time. Uh, it was last year, had tried to do this. And uh, Mattis, his defense secretary, resigned and was eventually, essentially, the forced into having to reverse it. And eventually, uh, after a year of being. Uh, fluffed, for want of a better phrase, by mm -hmm. Erdogan. Um, he's eventually kowtowed and allowed him to do an Arab slash genocide. Yep. So that um, in, uh, incursion, I guess, I don't know what, I guess they're going to create, the idea is to create a Turkish safe zone. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was started yesterday, was it? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And yeah, it's continuing and Kurds are currently dying. And yeah, ever, I think everyone is just astonished, uh, except uh, Turkey, of course. And yeah. pretty much everyone except uh, Turkey and Donald Trump are freaking out. 
I mean, I actually haven't yeah. heard much in the way of international response, but I watch American news. So they barely have time to get out all the stuff that's come out on Rudy Giuliani in the last 48 hours, let alone international leaders commenting on, you know, the Turkish incursion, invasion, whatever you want to call it. Mm. I don't, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's all rather hectic and breathtaking. It really is. Um, there have been some great betrayals in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. uh, few have been worse than what we've seen in uh, northern Syria, and I suppose to a certain extent Iraq, um, over the last, what, 72 hours, basically? Yeah. Uh, or over the last four or five days, I suppose, in total. Um, where essentially the US outsourced the defeat of ISIS, or at least holding back ISIS, to the Kurds for years, and thousands of Kurds bravely fought and died. And indeed, internationalist uh, socialist uh, uh, troops were there as well, although they make up very much a minority, um, uh, in their thousands. And the US lost 17 people, mostly via accidents, which, you know, it doesn't make it okay. I'm just pointing out the number differential there. Um, and... Uh, to stab them in the back this way and allow an authoritarian dictator slash religious fanatic. By the way, has been funneling some groups that we know have been funneling guns to ISIS in uh, Iraq and Syria. Uh, Erdogan, uh, to go in and slaughter them is, like I say, well, I think one of the greatest betrayals, certainly of modern times, arguably of all times. Yeah, I mean, we talk in American history about uh, Benedict Arnold and his treason yep. to his country, and I think Donald Trump's name is going to be attached to an American president breaking... An, you know the alliance of basically betraying an, an international ally and not doing it for any reason no. other than spur of the moment he wanted to give in to yet another dictator's demands so he just did and he go i dare say he gave it less than 10 seconds thought well you know he's got two properties in istanbul yeah yeah oh yeah no yeah partly he's, he's doing this because of a hotel mm -hmm. yeah which is pretty disgusting yeah yeah we we know which side his bread is buttered so to speak and so at this point we just don't i mean i've heard um anywhere from dozens to a hundred kurds have been killed but the numbers kind of you can't it's hard to take them on well, face value because they're coming from yeah. the turks they're going to overestimate yeah. they come from the kurds they'll probably downplay them so it's really vague right now but well yeah clearly people are being well, injured and killed yeah, uh, the the Turkey. This is again. You've got to bear in mind. This is what authoritarian fascist scum like Erdogan do. Is that they are claiming that they've killed 138 terrorists. Um, we know for a fact that there have been children. Yeah. Not just adults, children. Yeah. Who apparently are now classified as terrorists according to the Turks. Uh, not 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 the Turks. The Turkish government. Let's yeah. not. Yeah. Let's not make it let's about people. Let's be accurate here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Turkish population government and the Turkish yeah. armed forces. Uh, are classifying children as terrorists, which I think gives you some impression as to how seriously to take their humanitarian claims. Yeah. Um, yeah, and domestically, yeah. Uh, the Republicans... Also, just, oh, just yeah. a quick Go thing about... Uh, the, uh, before we even go into that, yeah, Erdogan, yeah, I really have. I mean, I've begun to despise the guy in a way I didn't think it was possible, frankly. Um, the bullshit he spouted today in front of the Turkish parliament about... If the EU calls this an invasion of Turkey, even though that's blatantly what it is by any definition of what mm -hmm. invasion means as a yep. phrase, um, then they'll open the gates and let 3.6 million uh, refugees into Europe. A, that's not really how it works, you fucking idiot. B, uh, the EU is literally paying you in the form of a $20 billion aid package over the next five years, I think it is, to basically keep those people there. We're paying them not to let them in. So if you do that, that money tab gets turned the fuck off and your economy collapses overnight, you stupid cunt. So no, no, you're not going to be doing that. You're a liar. Okay, yeah, I think that is... I'm glad that's on the record. Because I didn't know that about yes, the payment. sorry. I didn't know about yeah. the payment. Yeah, there's a, well, they, they call it an aid package. They signed it about three years ago in order to basically stop the flood of... Mm -hmm. uh, I say flood, you shouldn't... Don't use the words the right was, use. The, the, the constant, you know, the, the stream of, of people coming from... Fleeing uh, from war like, from, and battles. From the, yeah, from the... 
from the bombs that we've been dropping on them. Surprising they don't want to stay there. Hmm. And by the way, Turkey, uh, you, you're supposedly doing this to try and get immigrants back into the safe zone, quote-unquote. Uh, you're going to create more immigrants than you possibly thought you could have done in the first place. And a lot of them are going to escape into Turkey, you fucking idiot. Because you don't have full control over that border, obviously. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, so the EU have been um, have been giving this, uh, this 20 billion over five years or something as an aid package, basically a bribe to keep these people there uh, so that we don't have to have lots of immigrants because that's politically disadvantageous, let's say, for every nation in Europe. Um, so, uh, yeah, but the, it, without that money, the Turkish economy, which is rocky as fuck anyway, would collapse. So, no, I mean, he's just a liar. But this, is, but this is what this is what populism does. Yeah, it's yeah. This is what populism always is. When it practically comes down to it, they don't actually do anything of worth. They're lying garbage. You like to kill people. Well, you know, Trump said when he responded to his call with Erdogan and his his order to the military that if Turkey did anything that he and his great wisdom, unmatched wisdom, please. unmatched wisdom, decided was too far then he would destroy their economy and then yeah. they were told about like the killing of kids and he's like well you know like that's not really the response you promised yeah well exactly he's totally full of shit in the same way that the uh, um the uh, the lies told by the uh, u.s military in saying they were going to reinforce a no-fly zone i told you in the last episode they wouldn't do it and they haven't yeah the They've white house from the air. yeah yeah the white house ordered them to not do anything yeah exactly yeah so it's not a no-fly zone just saying please don't fly here is not a no-fly zone if you don't enforce it yeah it doesn't exist yeah so um yeah uh and we're gonna wait i guess and see what happens um but the kurds are technologically outmatched because they're facing yeah. a state government uh and well yeah, exactly, yeah. They're, there's no way they can realistically um, hold them back. They can hold back the likes of ISIS because they're uh, technologically and in terms of equipment something on a par. So it's a matter of numbers and support amongst the local population yeah. that gets uh, you to where you need to be. And that's where the alliance, where you provide them with arms and training and equipment so they do their job yeah. you know, locally better, which is what being an ally is. Um, and and yeah. Trump was complaining that it costs a lot of money to do that. And of course, did you it, see his? It costs, it costs a lot more to when uh, the ISIS camps that are now being, uh, the ISIS prison camps are now being uh, unmanned because those Turkish fighters have to go and defend their actual land against the invasion by the Turks. The Turkish government, come on, Kev, the Turkish government. Um, uh, so ISIS are going to. Um, are going to ISIS members are going to escape. There's no doubt about it. And did you uh, see in, his response in his to that? Unmatched wisdom. Yeah, he said, "Oh, that's okay because they're going to escape to Europe." Yep. A, fuck you, you cunt. Yeah. And B, you know, international travel is possible. Yeah. There are Americans. You know, you know the people that did 9/11 weren't from America. <laughs> they got there via you know planes and things. You fucking idiot. Also, he acts like there are no and, Americans in Europe. By the way, it's quite. A yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and the fact that virtually every European nation is an ally of America. So again, fuck you. Um, again, but I don't, again, I'm not entirely sure why we're allies with America, given the way America has treated us. But whatever. Anyway, um, uh, what was I going to fucking say? Oh yeah, and it's ha -ha. already costing the taxpayer way more money because um, because of this. Something like 30 of the most high-profile, most dangerous active terrorists from ISIS have been taken into custody by the American government because they're so dangerous they couldn't afford to allow them to uh, to escape. So they had to take them into custody, including two members of what's called the was it the um, ISIS Beatles or whatever. Oh, yes, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's going to cost a fortune, and you're going to end up in essentially a Guantanamo Bay situation again. So, well done. It's already costing you a fuck ton of money, and you're doing the morally bankrupt thing as well, you fucking twat. This is what you get. When you make up foreign policy whilst you're taking a shit, probably doesn't end up well for you. 
No. Quite complicated, Middle East. I don't know if you've thought about it at all, Mr. Trump, but it's actually a phenomenally delicately balanced situation, which if you just go, oh, yeah, whatever, we're just going to move back and allow, allow one country to invade another country, things get fucked up really badly, really quickly. But as I say, I think because of his sociopathic tendencies, he doesn't care. He, no, he doesn't honestly, care. he's just a narcissist. That's it. Well, not just that, but the light. Like the, um, a story I mentioned, didn't I, about the American diplomat's um, wife who, he, well, he wasn't even a diplomat, but he yeah. was working in some capacity for the American government. I saw his response to that too. Yeah, exactly. And he basically just said, oh, it was an accident. A, we'd like to have like a police investigation, including interviewing that person in order to come to that conclusion. It may very well have been. Uh, but we, we may never actually fully know because we'll never be able to interview this person uh, because you're wrongly giving them international diplomatic uh, cover when it's not necessary or even possibly legal, but who knows. Um, but not just that, but he lied. He outright lied because he said that um, he was going to be talking to this person and trying to convince them to cooperate with the British uh, authorities, even though it was found via a, a photograph of the... Um, not cue card what's it called the briefing card he had which by the way it's really interesting when you look at that photograph the briefing card I understand why a president would need a briefing card for potential things that might crop up because you can't remember everything all of the time that's yeah. fine right yeah. but it shows it had, you're prepared yeah before each like re response it had in brackets if brought up <laughs> why does he need to be meant what does he think it's a fucking script like <clears throat> Obviously, if brought, if mentioned, why does he need to be told that? Like, oh God, he's so dumb. But anyway, on that card, which, like I say, was uh, uh, it was ca captured because he he didn't hide it or anything. He just had it in his fucking hand. Um, it literally had the response, which was that the that person would not be going to Britain. The U.S. government would not be waiving diplomatic immunity. So, basically, fuck you. So he was lying. He literally just said the first thing that popped into his head that he thought would so make him sound good, mm -hmm. but it yeah. was a lie. Of course, because he just makes yeah. stuff up. That wasn't actually yeah. the response I was thinking of. I hadn't heard that or known that, so thanks for that update as well. It's always really good exchanging information with you, Kevin. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, but you. the wow. quote I saw him say was along the lines of, it probably was an accident because you guys drive on the other side of the road, and she probably... Well, to, well, to be fair, that's that might actually be what it was. It was driving on the wrong side but of the road. But it doesn't matter. But we don't know. She could have been drunk. You know, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean it's necessarily an accident. Uh, if you can't drive on the right side of, or on the left side, yeah, the correct side, as, as it is here, yeah, um, then don't. Don't drive here. Yeah. You can get a taxi. Your husband works for the US military in a foreign base. I'm sure you could get a lift or something. You know what I mean? Like, if you can't, if you know you can't drive, don't. And if like, you hit somebody, dead, no. exactly, yeah. you have to take responsibility from that. You're not just going to run away because you're an American. Well, actually, yes, she does, but she shouldn't. Yeah, is the point. Is yeah. the point. But Trump doesn't care about the rule of law. No, exactly. Why? Why are we allies? Why the fuck are we allies? Oh, we didn't even talking about the Trump and the Kurds. Oh my God! You know they didn't help us at Normandy. Oh gosh, yeah. This is the this is this news day. It feels like we're on light speed when it comes to news because yeah. we haven't even talked about Rudy Giuliani yet. But um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll get on to we'll get on to Rudy. Normandy. We'll get on to he is yeah yeah we'll get Normandy. on to Rudy Normandy. Yeah, we'll get on Normandy. Yes, Normandy. Yeah, in that the Kurds. in the press conference, he literally said, "Now I want to know what newspaper article he was referring to." Oh, it wasn't. It cause... was a conservative online blog. Of course, it fucking was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um where someone was writing an article saying that the Kurds didn't help us in Normandy yes. during the Second World War, which, why would they? They weren't in the... A, they weren't a nation state that was involved yes. in that conflict. They're not from anywhere near that general vicinity. No, okay, near this America, but America actively got involved in that war. They didn't, and they didn't have a state with which to do so anyway. So what difference does that make? It's total bollocks. Yeah, it's... It He's, the, he's delusional garbage. What is he talking about? Especially when you consider that what the Kurds have done is help us in our fight against ISIS. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not, who, you, I mean, you, yeah. The past is dead. Who, what matters is now and also going forward. It, it yeah. just, 
yeah but my uh, you're like somebody get the call the nursing home please take him away from the microphones take him give him a, get, take strip of his power he's not fit to serve mentally or emotionally no, no he's not and he ha well to be fair he never has been but no. he's getting worse there's no doubt he's getting worse um, which I mean, like this, it's a stressful, pressurized job. Albeit that he's mostly playing golf and yeah, twittering and watching yeah. Fox um, and Friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all, all good things. Not not like reading briefing papers or actually reading anything, because yeah. I don't think he can read. But um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, of all of the things, it's so strange because he's going to actively have. Hey, he's lying about the, the idea that ISIS is defeated. Yes. It doesn't, Yep. That's just not true. No expert agrees with him on that. In fact, I've seen several of them not just say he's wrong, say he's a liar. He's lying about this. Secondly, this is going to actively allow them to regain territory and mm -hmm. reform and start doing terrorist attacks. Because lest we forget, it was like ISIS members that were doing the, the Bataclan Theatre in Paris and various other things. Yeah, attacking. They, they're going to be able to do that shit mm -hmm. again. So, I mean, it, he's actively allowing ISIS to make their resurgence yeah, someone said that at it's their ridiculous. height the caliphate had the territory the size of Great Britain and yeah. now they've got basically yeah. nothing mm. but they still exist right They're but they don't there. have they don't have a base from which to launch operations they don't have a secure yeah. place to make plans in the long term and run complicated international you know cells yeah, exactly. right and they will and Americans will die because of this now it shouldn't matter where the person right. is from but if America, if he's America first, he's actively endangering Americans. So his he's not job, America first. Yes. He's Trump first. One of his jobs as the executive office holder of the nation is to take care of our, you know, our citizens mm. domestically and abroad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, That's, of course. He, uh, he has to have our interests first and the national interest, not his personal profit. No, he's too busy. He's too busy going about Sleepy Joe and Shifty Shift. God, he's so clever, isn't he? Oh, he's so unbelievably bright. His unmatched wisdom. Yeah. At some point, we should talk about Joe Biden's... I mean, everyone's congratulating him. I think it's his lame... Uh, pro impeachment speech, but that th we can get on that later in the show because there are way other things that need to come first. Um, okay, well, well, just uh, you've brought it up now; it's happening. Okay, I thought it was relatively lame, but what I did like was the point he made about um, uh, 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 oh shit, about yeah, about about impeachment. About it's not just what the person has done, but the threat, the potential threat that the the president staying in power can have which is enormous, as we know. So I, I thought that was an interesting point and a point that you... I don't know if that necessarily would factor into the legal situation, but it's still worthy of note in the, imper in the uh, impeachment investigation. Yeah. But yeah, it was. It's too, it's too little too late. But I get it because he doesn't want this story to continue because people are like, well, maybe he's a bit corrupt then. Maybe we should look for someone else. Like, he doesn't necessarily want to take that on. I get that. This is why it's I think... politics, yeah. This is why I think he's totally misplayed this entirely. Um, so we'll talk about the speech in a minute. So if I forget about that, remind me. But in terms of his take on this, as soon as this his name got tied to Trump committing a crime, he violated his oath of office. He solicited something of value from a foreign person, a foreign government to aid him in his campaign. That's just criminal. Like that's going to be, a, I think, an article of impeachment. And Biden's name is now going to be tied to that. So he needed to get out there and make this story not about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, but about his um, solicitation of a, something of value from the Ukrainian government. That and focus on that framing of it and talk about it. And this is what my problem with the speech was: is that he doesn't, you know, he speaks in a way he sounds like he just sounds like a politician. You know what I wanted to hear. To be I, to be fair, he is right, but this That's, is the problem. What what yeah. going up? Somebody who does politician speak against Trump, is just not going to connect with people. You know who need to be connected with. And what I wanted to see Joe Biden talk about was the threat to America that it puts uh, us all under when the president of the United States uses our national reputation to solicit information on other Americans. And how wrong that is, 
and how we need to be protected from that. Exactly. That's the reason why we have the emoluments clause. That's why we have impeachments. A king president is exactly what the founders feared, and they gave us the tools to protect our democracy, and it's called impeachment. And that is why I am coming. That's what I would have said. Because, I mean, there was just no, you know, I thought kind of real heart behind his speech. And yeah, so I think he's completely misplayed this. I think he's late to the party on the whole impeachment game, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. And he's got to get out. He's got to kind of make this when the media talk about it. They need to quote Joe Biden talking about tr- Trump soliciting information or soliciting a, a, an investigation or soliciting something of value. They, they can his he can focus group, whatever works best. But yeah, so that's my take. True. Yeah. But like I say, it's when you mention a solicitation of an, uh, an inquiry or whatever, or an investigation, people then go, an investigation into what? Oh, you know, Joe you're Biden right, you're right, you're right. You know what better language is? He, he, is, he, is putting, he is putting the nation's interest second to his own from yeah. the White House. That's a better way, because yeah. then that doesn't bring up the investigation. You're right. When you're, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that would be the messaging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He violated but his own office. Say, it's, it's too little yeah. too late, and I think it's he's doing it out of desperation because he's fallen behind in the polls. I mean, he's starting to fade, but yeah, he sees it too. I mean, yeah. and the thing that Warren's got going for her is that um, when it comes to people who voted for Sanders in 2016, Sanders, like 30% are staying, but like 20-some percent have moved over. So they're, they're like her, sec- they're, she's his second choice. And when you mm-hmm. look at Clinton voters from 2016, she's their second choice. Yeah. So she's getting from both streams. She's got it. She's yeah. sitting and, in a really sweet spot now in the primary. And Sanders, yeah, and Sanders is fading physically, clearly. Like if he's going to scale back the uh, uh, campaign, the, the one thing he really had going for him was he out campaigned in terms of energy and events and stuff, everyone. But now, if he can't do that, then he's yeah, he's hold below the waterline. Well, okay, which so, leaves Lahore is like the heir of those votes, basically. So two things. I think it's kind of weird that this isn't being talked about in the media. You can see this in the reporting, and I heard Joe and Scarborough talk about their sympathies to the Sanders family on whatever, and I was like, on what? And when I went on Twitter, it was that his daughter-in-law died. Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah. And, after a battle with cancer. Well, yeah, but after like a diagnosis and then she was dead three days later. I mean, it was really, yeah. really sudden. She was sick for three weeks, according to the reporting, and that, but her death was very unexpected and very sudden. She's in her late 40s. I think she's about my age, actually. Um, and it just seemed weird to me that he was doing press conferences on the lawn of his house at this time. And he's since since he said he was going to cut back, he's now gone back on that, saying he's not going to cut back on his campaigning today, or maybe it was late last night. And I'm just like, well, no, I, well, I no, find that's the, kind of strange. No, to be fair, I think he said he was going to scale it back after the next town hall thing, the, the CNN town hall on, is it next Friday or Saturday or whatever? Um, he said he, well, what I quote saw from him, he said that he said something to the media and that the media got it wrong and that he won't be, you oh, know, okay. like cutting back. Because he did say, he, he gave this press conference on the lawn where he talked about he wasn't listening to the symptoms of his body. He was more fatigued than he had usually been, but he just kind of blew it off and he was stupid. And that going forward, he was going to like cut back from four events a day to you know and traveling state to state and then the media put that out there and then today i read he said no i didn't mean that that was <laughs> so but yeah his his health has become an issue now yeah okay. so yeah and he's going to be appearing yeah, at the because no i mean yeah he's really old look i mean that's that shouldn't stop you from running but if you're not physically able at this point i mean you're not going to make four years let alone eight like it that doesn't seem possible because he's got it's he's got a relatively cushy existence by comparison to the day-to-day grind of presidency eh? oh yeah it's assuming an... you don't do a trump and totally phone it in every yeah. day like if you actually do the job properly <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah people who do the job properly age intensely and this yeah. is it um you know I, and i had someone who like, there was a poll well, did, you, did you see the bill mitchell thing about mitt romney okay about, wait wait wait. Like, let like... me do this first let me do this first oh. 
Okay, so 66% of Democrats said that asking about Bernie Sanders' health was um, a, a fair issue or a fair question. And I retweeted that, and someone came back on me and said it's ageist. And then I said, well, how do you know that all these people are ageist? And you're saying uh, something along the lines of, uh, you know, it's 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 to do with how old he is, and it doesn't have to do with his health. He's going to be fine. And eventually what it worked out to is this guy had stents in his heart, too. He was about the same age as Bernie, so I think he was taking it personally. But if when it comes to claims of ageism, with, with Bernie Sanders being 78 and now also having a heart attack, um, the presidency, as Kevin was saying, is such an intense job. It's so aging. It's so stressful and full on that if you say it's ageist to say Bernie Sanders is we should look at his health when he's taking the job for president it would be ages to say well if he wanted to be a green beret and take the physical exertion test you know yeah. it's ages to say he shouldn't you know be a green beret like no we just don't want him to die <laughs> yeah like, that's yeah ideally you don't want your head of state to collapse and die like in a press conference or something yeah i don't like, want him to be our nominee but that doesn't mean i don't want him to have scenario. a healthy life into his 90s yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> or beyond even but the presidency well, as you I think said, he's still got I think uh, well regardless of whether he wins the nomination or not I think he's still got plenty to give in the political sphere yeah I think he's still got plenty of life ahead of him um, but regardless of that assuming he did win um, and became president like I said with all the stresses and strains of that he's not getting any younger or healthier I it doesn't it, that doesn't seem age that just seems an appropriate response or that just seems a perfectly reasonable thing to ask about now just because someone's a bit ill or a bit old shouldn't deny them the chance to run. But I think it's perfectly reasonable to ask, are you both uh, emotionally, intellectually, in terms of your knowledge, in terms of your contacts and all the rest of it, uh, up to the job? And are you physically up to the job? Because mm -hmm. it involves a lot of stress and indeed a lot of travel. Yep. Like, you're going to have to fly a lot of fucking places. And not just that, well, even just within America, sometimes you're going to have to fly from, like, Washington to L.A. or something. Well, that's not a short journey. Yeah. And those international so just, trips just are routine. Your... Global yeah, conferences. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've got to go to a G8 every year. And that's going to be in, like, Japan one year, and then Germany, and then Canada, and then fucking wherever else, France or whatever. Like, you're going to... That's a lot of travel. And again doesn't mean that if you're old or if you're a little bit ill you can't travel i mean fucking fdr managed it with a heart that was four times the normal size at, at points because of his fucking blood pressure problems so it can be done but that's an exceptional circumstance and um it's something that people will consider end of the day yeah. voters will consider yeah. it so yeah we can say what we want but it will be in people's minds so whether or not yeah. it'll be a deciding factor will be personal, but certainly it's on the it's on the diet it's on the list of things to people will talk about now, especially when the first town hall that he's going to be doing on the fifteenth, I think it is this month, is a three hour town hall. So, mm. well, the one the CNN one that's coming up is the equality in the USA, but he didn't go to the Democratic um, LGBT town hall, did he? I thought so, well, I don't I don't. I don't understand what that was about. Why didn't he? Why didn't he do that event? I thought his campaign was like a really peculiar. Yeah, I thought his campaign reported after he was discharged he was going to take time off until the town hall. But now he's doing oh, events. No this, no, this was. Oh okay. no, no, no! I'm sorry. There was a, 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 a Democratic nominee town hall thing about uh, LGBT issues. This was about well, the end of June, beginning of oh, July, okay. something like that. Yeah, and he just didn't go to it. Hmm. I what? That seems really, which I'm sure someone will bring up. Like he'll say, obviously at the equality in the USA thing, at the end, the CNN one. But some, you know, he'll say, yeah, I'm for LGBT, and someone will go, well, why didn't you go to that event then? Like, why didn't you do that? That's, I mean, like I, I like Bernie Sanders. I'm just saying there are holes to pick there, and he's not. It doesn't seem like a very um, complete politician. Yeah, I which mean, in many respects is his like unique selling point, but it also means that in the real politic of it, he can be attacked very easily. I, I'm just going to let you take that one and run with it all the way to the end zone. I'm going to applaud and leave that leave that topic alone. You sure you don't want to? You sure you don't want to take the extra point on? No, 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 no. no I'm good. <laughs> all right. So how do? Oh, I know how we get back to something 
kind of close to what we were talking about oh, no, before. Well, yeah, I was going to say Bill Mitchell, the fucking yeah. conservative twat. Yeah, oh. he put out a tweet about Mitt Romney going about uh, Trump derangement syndrome ages people. And he said, oh, here's a picture of him with a 2000 the GOP national convention. And here's a picture of him now. Yeah, he's an old man who was seven years older than he was in the first picture. I'm not surprised he looks a lot older now, you fucking idiot. What? Show you a picture twat. of that guy when he's like a baby and then show him seven years later. I'm like, oh, look how exactly. old he's got. <laughs> look at the freakish growth. He was two feet tall in the first picture. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I mean, these people are so strange. Yeah. The Trump cultists, the ones that are so invested in this, much like a... Uh, uh, um, Giuliani, which is a good segue. Well, actually, I uh, was going to so go to I was going to go to the Republicans because Giuliani is just so much craziness. You can't really top it. So I think we need to hold him off to the end. So I was thinking about top him. doing um, <laughs> ha, 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 no, like no, no, that's sexually. in Minecraft. In Minecraft. <laughs> right. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I meant. Um, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Shit. So <laughs> I was going to say top him sexually. You wanted to have sex with. You want to say have anal sex oh, with right. Rudy Giuliani? Um, Republican reactions to Trump's decision to abandon the Kurds. Lindsey mm. Graham, Franklin Graham, uh, yeah, like uh, some of right. the other ones. Have you heard any of their reactions? Did you see the Lindsey Graham meltdown? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He didn't take it well, did I? He, um, he actually he gave the enough, Turks but... he gave the Turks a red line. Did you see what that? Does that? What does that even mean, yeah, though? We I, can't I, do anything. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's what he threatened. And then they went ahead the, like six hours later and rolled in, so... Oh, no. So what was his red line, then? I'll find it. I, I saved it. Oh, t- stupid, okay. stupid Skype. I have literally three Skype windows open now. All right, you talk. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so... But, but this, uh, regardless of what it is, it's, it's sort of irrelevant in the sense that he can't enforce it. Like, a president can do a red line because he can do some shit. But he's he's like um, a senior member of the Senate, but he's not he's not actually he doesn't have executive power. No, nope. he can't do anything. He he so it's yeah he, completely hot. Yes, yeah, and he's gonna he's now sponsoring some sort of bill in the Senate to you know punish Turkey for what they're doing. It's like and everyone's just dude, you own this. This is you. You cozied up to this guy. You empowered him. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have to go over Carl getting booted again from a campus for his horrible <laughs> comments. It is funny they yeah. got booted, but the controversy was kind of sad on campus. Uh there is yeah. so much going on. It is ridiculous. Yeah. My yeah, feed um, is ridiculous. Yeah, it's uh in terms of uh, the the bill in the Senate though, um I'm given to believe that even if they pass it uh, whilst the president, I don't believe, can veto it, he can just not implement the sanctions because it's in his power to do foreign policy independently. Yeah. So, uh, so he doesn't actually have to do sanctions. So again, basically hollow. A, a token gesture of, of resistance after having empowered this fucking monster yeah. for years now. Yeah. So essentially, uh, I mean, if there's one positive out of this, it makes it makes Graham look like the cunt that he is. So that's, I mean, it's not worth the ocean of Kurdish blood that's going to be gotten from this, but if we're looking for any silver lining, and by Christ you're having to look hard for that silver lining, it's making that toadying fucking supine lackey look like the the spineless piece of garbage that he is. All right, I found the tweet. I'll share my screen, but not my sound. Did that work? No, that did not work at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, it did work. It just was a little bit delayed. Na 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 na. Baby, give it up, give it up. Baby, give it up. All right, turn the radio that. back to Kevin and Christie's happy hour. Did, 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 like, I wish I could do like static, AM, FM radio static. <laughs> Come on, that was that was radio interference. It's Skype interference. They just keep popping up windows everywhere. All right, so here it is. To the Turkish government, you do not have a green light to enter into northern Syria. Yeah, there is yes, a massive yes, they do. Yeah. They literally do. They got it from yeah. your from your friend Trump. There is a massive yeah. bipartisan there is massive bipartisan opposition in Congress, which you should see as a red line you should not cross. I think he wiped his dick on that red line. <sighs> 
yeah, I think. I think he literally. Did. I think he literally smeared his cock cheese on your red line, Mister Graham. In the same way that Carl would smear warm horse manure. Indeed. As a lot of people are saying, according to Rick Perry. Yeah, Rick Perry, and uh, and uh, there was a the great article in the newspaper that said that horse manure didn't help us on nine eleven. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, that may, that means something apparently. Okay. So. Um, all right, so Republicans, yeah, so uh, Lindsey Graham is just frothing. He's so insulted and angry that Trump didn't call him or consult him or ask him, and then he just yeah. who who's this? Sorry, who who am I? Who? L- Lindsey Graham. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was really. Oh, so that's what he's angry about. He didn't. He didn't ring me. <laughs> the yeah. senpai didn't notice me. Yeah, he's well. He's mad also about like you know the the abandonment. He's more upset about the Kurds than he is about attacks on by Russians on the American election system. Now, I'm not saying that's not shade to the Kurds because we should all be concerned. But the fact you that is shade the Kurds. that it took for but um, exactly no, what I'd expect a slave owner I'm, to do. I'm throwing but, shade at Lindsey Graham, whose family probably owned slaves mm. back in the day. <laughs> but well, yes, they probably did. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, it's definitely throwing. He doesn't shame look like he was on. Lindsay. He doesn't look like he was necessarily on the other side of that interaction. Let's just put it that way. Right. Yeah. He wasn't. He wouldn't have been fighting for the for the north. Um, but anyway, so he's. Uh, well, I don't think he'd have been fighting at all. And actually, that's another point with Trump and his bullshit uh, going on about they didn't help us during uh, uh, Normandy. Well, you didn't help during the fall of Hanoi, did you? You could have. Um. Okay. I'll just leave that no, hanging. No, I'm just saying because he could he didn't go to Vietnam was the point. Oh, okay, making. got it, got yeah. it. All right, sorry, it was a little too oblique a reference for me. I'm saying he's a coward and that war isn't his business, so don't do it. Okay, so do you want to do anything on like Franklin Graham, who was also upset at Trump? Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, and Ralph Reed is bringing out a campaign now saying that uh, evangelical Christians should, you know, vote for Trump and support him because he's like God's chosen. Uh, oh, oh, and another. And so that's a pro-Trump thing. But Pat Robertson got involved. Oh, okay. And uh, Pat Robertson, after Trump made the call with uh, announced the, call, the withdrawal, he went on air and said that if Trump let this happen to the Kurds. He might have the mandate of heaven removed from him. <laughs> well, it's interesting that someone not in heaven <clears throat> um, would would be able to tell that. Yeah, it's almost like it's a lot of old shit. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, yeah. So so Trump is now like at the moment when the impeachment inquiry is going forward. Oh, and did you see the Fox News poll that came out today? Yeah, even Fox News polling. Which, no. let's be honest, is not entirely accurate no, or unbiased. Uh, well, I'm actually going to say, okay, so some of it is how you word the question. But if you look at their election, the statistician, the statisticians that they had on, you remember the famous Karl Rove meltdown? where he just, Oh, yeah, that was brilliant. Okay, so, I mean, people who work in polling and are professionals, they wanted to do predictions right. They want to do... So I will shit all over Rasmussen polls. They are terrible. <laughs> they Their methodology <laughs> is messed up. They're always... Uh, skewed but i think generally you can fox news isn't rated any worse than like yougov or washington post so it, yes the thing about it that i think should be more interesting is that yeah something that would come out of uh, fox news it was being allowed to be actually it wasn't being reported on for a while mm. on the air they were they had it on their website but the the various anchors weren't bringing up their own poll on the channel <laughs> and yeah uh as I people wonder why yeah, and as people in the chat have already anticipated, the it put the number at favoring impeachment of Donald Trump at 51%. That number goes up to 55% if you ask people who say he should be impeached but not removed. But why you would do that, I don't know, because I don't see the yeah. point of impeaching him but not removing him. Um, yeah, it's really strange. <laughs> those are probably the people who are like Republicans who are like, oh, it was a bad thing, but I don't think he should be removed from office. Yeah, maybe. That might be their sort of median vote, uh, hiding in the middles. Uh, so Trump is seeing all the numbers in favor of impeachment get higher than his approval ratings. Oh, but I can't have the feeling that was definitely shade being thrown at me then for criticizing Fox News polling. Well, a little definitely. bit. But I, did yeah. it, I didn't mention you by name. 
but who else is in this fucking room? I what? knocked you. I knocked you out before I threw you under the bus, and then I dazzled you <laughs> with my numbers. I th well, yeah, I don't think you my mentioned my polling numbers. science. Well, polling Did maths. <laughs> it's not really science. What? It's scientific in its method, but it's not science. It's not real science. Like, no, I uh, uh, in memes. <laughs> like memes. Oh memes, my! Oh memes my! Memes are science. All right. So also, um, uh, if you watch the you know political gossip paper, you know, like Politico and Axios and all of those other the Hill and stuff, Trump is now back to calling McDonald McDonald McConnell uh two or three times yeah, three a day. A day. Yeah. Yeah. So he's tweeting constantly. He's just melting down, tweeting gibberish. He's having these press conferences. Oh my gosh! Did well, you love, see? Yeah. Oh, I, love the, I love that he keeps going on about like in these press conferences, like oh, impeachment doesn't mean anything. Have you heard him talk about anything else? Yes. Yeah. Well, well the last week he apparently swings between thinking impeachment's going to help get him reelected to being completely like freaked out by it because he, he yeah. thinks it's going to stain his legacy. No, he's already done that. But. Mm -hmm. Um, True. He doesn't want to get down in history as one of three ever to be impeached. So yeah. I mean, did you see what it's not he? Not a good look, is it? Did you see the story he told about being with families who were meeting the coffins of their loved ones coming back from service where they were killed overseas? No. It it's horrific. It's oh man. I'm absolutely certain it is, but please do tell. <sighs> I don't. I maybe I, I'll see if I can get a, a maybe somebody in the chat can get a clip link of it up because um, I don't know if I can do it like off of a news channel. Uh, you have to see it to believe it. But he okay. he basically says I get uh, uh all right sorry you know what I actually have up in my bookmarks because I'm such a fucking oh. I'm such a fucking boss. The next the tweet I have this is the transcript of the story Trump told about what he saw and thought when he visited Dover Air Force Base as soldiers killed in action were returned in coffins. So apparently to according to House like what I'm sorry White House scheduling they um, Hello? yeah are you still there? I am now. No. Oh, okay. Yes. Apparently All right. the connection was lost briefly. Oh, okay. All right. You anyway you're such a fu you, you were such a fucking boss. And then it cut out, so I don't know Oh, boss, you are oh. you are a boss ass bitch, 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 <laughs> bitch. I'm a boss ass bitch. bitch, bitch. Just throwing a bit of menage on you there. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, we should make that our theme song. All right. Um. So yeah, <laughs> I am such a boss because I had bookmarks. I'm fly. I'm fly like a G6. Ooh, nice. Saying. Yeah. I'm so f I'm so fly. I'm a f flight risk. I don't know. I can't remember that. It was a joiner line, but I messed it up. Anyway, I had t uh, bookmarked this, which I saw on Twitter, which is a transcript of what Trump said. Now, oh. all right, so this isn't like, there's no content warning for anything in, in the typical ways. It's just, it's like a, a content warning for you. Like yeah. this is... Well, I saw, what I did see, it was him and about signing the letters, like to the families of bereaved soldiers. But instead of saying like, oh, it's, horrific for the families he was like it's really difficult for me it's sad yeah like but oh oh yeah you're the one that's been wronged in that situation because oh, you had to do your job kevin not the people whose families were fucking you know kevin slaughtered. kevin buckle in uh, buckle in oh god god okay all right what this was asking about was why he decided to pull support for the kurds and he goes on one of the rambles like he does mm. so it starts with this line now, I have to ramble like Trump. I'm sorry. Sometimes I call the parents. Sometimes I see the parents. I go to Dover when I can. But it's it's so devastating for the parents that they... It's so devastating. When they bring that boy or a young woman out of the back of these big, powerful planes in a coffin, and the parents are there, you know, we have people that do that. That's what they do. They... They, they work that. They accommodate everybody. That's what they do. And they do an incredible job. And I said, the parents seem to be okay. I'll get there early. The parents seem to be okay. Well, actually, sir, they aren't. No, no, the way they're talking, they're really okay, aren't they? Sir, you never know until the back of that massive cargo plane opens up. And then they walk down holding a coffin with four or five great soldiers on each side of them representing our various forces. You never know. And then I see that, and I see the people that were smiling. Oh, Mr. President, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, and I think you're doing great. And then 20, oh. yeah, yeah. Oh, God. 
And then 20 oh. minutes later, we will be outside and that big plane pulls up and that door comes down and they are walking the coffin with their boy inside this coffin, an American flag over the top, and they're walking that coffin down this ramp. And I've seen people that I thought were really incredible, the way they were, I didn't even understand how they could take it so well, scream like I've never seen anything before. Sometimes they'll run to the coffin, they'll break, break through the military barriers, they'll run to the coffin and jump on top of the coffin crying, mothers and wives crying desperately, and this is all on these endless wars that just never stop. Of course, he didn't bring home any <sighs> troops. He didn't bring home any troops. No, he didn't bring home a single troop. Uh, it, uh, I think you're doing great. Look, he's such uh, yeah. insecure scum. Yeah. Fuck him. Oh, just oh, I'm bummed out now. I'm sorry, but yeah. Yeah. No, that was yeah. That's oh. what a piece of shit, really. Again, uh, only a uh, only a straight white, well, straight orange man could possibly have all of everything in his life given to him and stumble into his positions of power and complain that he's the one that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Only oh, he's, he loves playing the victim. Like, yeah, I, I, I go down to Dover from time to time when I can be bothered in between golf trips, you know. Twice. Mm. Twice in three years. Yeah. And, and he's yeah. also getting a lot of blowback for the fact that he is describing what is this terrible private moment for the family. You yeah. know, he's using that as his shield for his policy that won't bring a single soldier back. Alive. Yeah. Indeed. So, yeah. yeah, that happened as well. Uh, All right, do you want a bit more levity now? Well, a bit more levity. Let's right. qu quickly segue into some levity. <laughs> did we see, did we see another Jacob Wall piece of nonsense? Oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Did you bookmark it or did, oh. should we just describe it? I can't remember. Um, um, I don't think we have time. We've already been going for like an hour. You know, I bookmarked it, but this week. Oh, my God, man. I mean, you know, I... Yeah, no, I that's what, well, I'll just mention uh, it briefly then. Okay. Basically, they paid a fake person to issue them with a cease and desist <laughs> that was supposedly from <laughs> Kamala Harris, even though you literally don't have to actually serve a cease and desist letter. <laughs> that's not how that worked. Uh, and it was found out that that person was literally a paid actor to do that. Of course it was. Uh, and again, they were doing their press conference from um, your man's driveway because yes. why not? And, and <laughs> why this, not? And this time it was, yeah, uh, Kamala that was nailing a younger fitness trainer, which again, I, 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 did, I don't believe this, but if it were true, I would still be like, hey, high five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and also I well, should do a little... Bette Midler? Yeah. Even Bette Midler's dunking on him because she was like, oh, I've been away from Twitter. I hope no one's making up horrible lies like I'm fucking a 20-year-old dude. <laughs> Like even Bet Mid uh, fucking ducking on him. You know. She's like three oh, feet tall. Amazing. My heart just grew like three times bigger from that. Yeah, oh, brilliant. That's great. I mean, it's so good. Again, but without giving him any reference, yeah, without giving yeah. him any any publicity, but throwing plenty of shade. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Love it. Oh, by yeah. the way, just so a little. That's... Yeah, um, the Euphio answer, again, did a little $2 contribution, and I, I didn't have a chance to talk because it was in the middle of a flow, so I just wanted to call that out and say thanks, and I don't know what this, I don't even know if this is a scary, you know, link, so I don't know. It's going to be horrific, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a lemon, turkey lemon party. It. So, unless that's about poultry, it's probably going to be horrific. Yeah. Is what so, I would suggest. I don't know, maybe people can clarify in the chat, or if you read the chat from that part, because we don't watch what you guys are doing, really. Mostly. No, I'll be no. I mean, like I say, I'm mainly watching football. If you throw money I've at us, I've occasionally taken part in this conversation, but I'm mainly watching football. Yeah. If I'm honest. Yeah. So again, coming out with uh, w women, older women are sleeping with younger men. Oh no! How terrible! <laughs> How terrible for the younger men who yeah. complain all the time that they can't get laid. Although I do hope that, that the guy who Kamala Harris is definitely fucking brought a better selection of sex toys. Maybe. Do you remember when I pitched you that uh, ca venture capital idea called Cougar, which would be like Tinder, but for older men who want meaningless hookups with younger, or older women, sorry, who want meaningless hookups with the younger guys? I believe I do remember that, yes. Maybe this is all based, it's like pre publicity, yeah. trying to cash in on the Cougar. Well, 
Well, clearly there's there's a market, yeah. Uh, yes, clearly. <laughs> well, they're trying to show there's a market. That's what all these false accusations are. Is they're trying to say it's uh, cool excuse, to be a cougar? Me. Excuse me, false accusations. <laughs> yes, the open clearly, relationship and the clearly, trainer. Pulitzer winning <laughs> reporting uh, journalism <laughs> at its finest is what this is. A real yeah. Washington Post sort of exactly. Nixon. Wood, Woodward and Bernstein yeah. can suck a dick. Okay. <laughs> Jacob Wall is one of the greatest journalists of any age. Put that on a loop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Send that to Tim Pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically. I'm going to keep that and clip that. So if I ever need to, if I ever get so desperate for money that I have to go fake centrist, I could be yeah. like, "Now, nah, all all along, all along, I was with you guys, honest." You just have to just, like <laughs> filter out me laughing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, exactly. I was trying to say to to old SJW General Winters. Yes. That, uh, and she was. She was the general the whole time. Like I used to make a joke about it, but it was because I was scared. Because she used to beat me with a stick. Whenever she came over to the UK, all she'd do is thump me. Yeah, exactly. Now I was kind of into that because I'm a bit kinky, but you know, she she took it too far. Too far. far. She went. She went full. Uh, she went. She went full Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, I was going to say she brought a lime green dildo. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, I thought was a bit vanilla, but whatevs. Hashtag know. Lime you, Green You Dildo. deal with what you've got. <laughs> exactly. But I um, but I had actually washed it off before. I didn't make you wash it off in the sink after taking it out of the box. I don't think inserting it into my anus, it counts as cleaning it. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a euphemism. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so glad my mother can't operate a computer. <laughs> Oh. It's gonna leave that trying to hanging. Explain, trying to explain the layers of nonsense to that awful <laughs> show. No, mom, it was about Elizabeth Warren. Okay, there was this guy. Okay, there was. This... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, Jacob Wall was born in 1984, and well, actually, he was probably born much later than that. But you get the idea. Anyway, uh, uh, who's this awful person yeah, on my screen? Christian uh, past. No, to Trump would be like saying no to God. Oh God. Ugh. Yep, that's kind of what we're dealing well, with. As I'm happy, well, as oh. I'm happy to say no to both, but I mean, if only Trump didn't also exist. So yeah. You know. Oh, I guess maybe we should start with go. this one because the other one there's more info on. But I did see this coming out of the Washington Post two hours ago. In May, Ukrainian oligarch said Giuliani was orchestrating a clear conspiracy against Biden. Want to have a look at that? <laughs> No, these guys that doesn't seem of any interest. <laughs> these guys aren't very good at this whole international. Like criminals, basically, it's it's stupid Watergate. No. It is. It's like John Oliver says. It's yeah. stupid Watergate. Except instead of breaking into the DNC, they're trying to like get an, Ukraine to do an investigation into a crime that never happened. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, exactly. They, God, they're getting a foreign government to do the Watergate on a hotel that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right. That's that's an amazing analogy. Yeah. It's. it's it's ridiculous. So anyway. someone retreated this. It's actually from the 3rd of October, but I guess it becomes you know more relevant as time goes by and more stuff comes out. Months before an intelligence community whistleblower accused President Trump's lawyer, Rudolph Giuliani, of digging for dirt on former Vice President Joe Biden in Ukraine, men in that country knew what he was up to and some were talking about it publicly. One Ukrainian oligarch in particular, a figure close to President Zelensky, claims to have firsthand knowledge of Giuliani's... No, 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 no. no. Pronounce that first name. No way. Not touching that with a 10-foot pole. Volodymyr. Come on. That's easy. Volodymyr. There you go. Yeah. Volodymyr Zelensky. I don't know. I just feel like Natasha out of Boris and Natasha. Volodymyr Zelensky claims to have first-hand knowledge of Giuliani's activities because, he says, Giuliani's business associates tried to rope him into the scheme. When this Ukrainian business tycoon, Ior Kolomoski, Rejected, just do it with confidence. That is definitely correct. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Rejected Giuliani's request for help. Giuliani attacked him on Twitter and called for him to be investigated. Of course you did. Oh, for fuck's sake. You're such basic fucks. You really are. You've got one trick. You've got one trick. <laughs> Yell on Twitter. You spilled, you spilled my fucking pint, you cunt. I'm going to call for you to be investigated. Yep. Look, it's just, they've got one move, and it's shit. Oh, um, the Ufio answer said the initial link was displaying yearly U.S. dollars to Turkey arms. 
So it's not oh, okay. it's not a lemon party link. It's a safe, apparently. If you trust you feel. Well, in terms of human rights, it's kind of like Lemon Party. Horrific. Okay. It is horrific. Right. Um, sorry. Um, Kolomoisky then gave an on-the-record <clears throat> interview. Correct. In, That's still correct. On Ukrainian television, in which he predicted that Giuliani was soon going to be the center of a big scandal in the United States. In May, Kolomoisky told Ukrainian media in an interview, right. barely noticed in Washington, fuck you, that two of Giuliani's <laughs> business associates... <laughs> Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman came to visit him in Israel in April to, quote, demand, unquote. He set up a meeting between Giuliani and Zelensky. This was months before Ambassador Kurt Volker eventually did set up a meeting between Giuliani and Zelensky's advisor, Andrei Yermak. Uh, basically, they yeah. wanted to have a meeting with Zelensky and show Giuliani they had organized everything, a big scandal make break out sorry i'm going fast now because this is taking forever a big scandal may break out not only in I'm ukraine just, i'm just laughing now apologies i'm not even listening to what you're saying <laughs> you're just That's... laughing at my pronunciation of ukrainian no, I'm names at me just going correct, correct. <laughs> <I'm That's>, so... <laughs> correct you're entertaining yourself watching the footy and just going correct yes. correct you correct. need to look like playing with my soft <laughs> penis it feels slightly nice <laughs> all right so the quote is they wanted to have a meeting with Zelensky and show Giuliani that they had organized everything, Kolomoisky said. A big scandal may break out, not only in Ukraine, but in the United States. That is, it may turn out to be a conspiracy against Biden. So, But you nailed Biden, definitely. That is actually correct. Yeah, so yes. remember, this is from October 3rd. Right. And then yeah. he goes on to say, look, there's Giuliani and there are these two clowns, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, who are the milking, who are milking the bull here. What the fuck? You're not going to get anything from milking a bull. I think that's what the phrase you is. You are. You are. <laughs> not, not the kind of white substance you want, but you are. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how much empirical uh, 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 research I did into bull milking but um doesn't doesn't taste nice yeah okay though so uh thanks kevin for that uh... it makes it makes it makes breakfast time more interesting with the family milking the bull all right so lev parnas and igor fruman who are milking the bull here they are giuliani's clients kolomoski told the ukrainian pravda website Quote, they came here and told us they would organize a meeting with Zelensky. they allegedly struck a deal with the prosecutor general Lutensko, no, Lusenko, about the fate of this criminal case. Right. Bir Burisma? No, Burisma? No, that's uh, incorrect. I'm not, yeah. I can't even do the joke there. You fuck that one. <laughs> but, God damn um, it. Biden meddling in the U.S. election and so on. Now, apparently this guy is not an innocent party. He's been accused of financial crimes and start, of, of using quasi-military forces on behalf of his private bank to corruptly take over other companies. Oh, wow. So he's a um, lovely guy. Right. So, I yeah. mean, it's not like he's a... Yeah. He sounds, actually, he sounds like he should be a friend of Trump. So he sounds very Trumpian. Yes. He's basically yes. doing what Trump wants to do. Well, in this case, if he's friends with Zelensky, I think he's trying to stay away from... Well, I don't know. Stay away from corruption. I can't say that about him. But here's the important thing. He had these names and he had the Biden and meddling in the U.S. election about the whole Ukrainian was really behind the 26 meddling somehow and the DNC hacked themselves and they put the servers in Ukraine. You've heard well, this? They were, literally, they were literally scrubbing them with acid. And yeah, soap. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. So you saw these names, right? Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman. Okay. Well, I heard them much more, much more delightfully. Yeah, well, then we'll want to watch this other, or sorry, we want to take a look at this other bookmark that I had today. Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman after their arrest on campaign finance are they, charges. Are they, what the fuck? They were arrested they today. <laughs> They're apparently Ukrainian Americans. They look like, they look uh, like rejected men in black puppets. <laughs> you know the guy who has his head shut off again and again when it's growing yeah, back? Yeah. Like this yeah, guy looks them. like he's in the middle of growing the face figure into his head. Yeah. He looks like yeah, Charlie Kirk. Basically. He does. He's got a very Charlie. Do we do we know of the, uh, <laughs> the Eastern paternal? European background of Charlie Kirk <laughs> or Kirksky as the family was before they came uh. to America? Um, yeah, not just that, but I I don't know if they've taken one of those photos at a weird angle or one of them is very short. 
I think they they didn't move I, the camera down. I think that that's they're probably that's a real life heights, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, <sighs> yeah, oh, they, this... I mean they're yeah. I don't know what else to say, but yeah. Okay, so oh god, and there's another one. Jesus Christ, it's just like a fucking melting waxwork <laughs> ceremony. So no. <laughs> It's, it's like they opened up Indiana's box in the first Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, the exactly. Ark of the yeah. Covenant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Oh, he looks like but he it's does. so funny. In that picture, his face looks like, you know, when they take him into one of those wind tunnels? But it's like the wind tunnels aimed downwards and his cheeks are just going fucking <laughs> mental. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So this happened but today. That's just his face. That's just his flesh gr- gradually degrading and falling off of his bones. As we all will eventually, if we live that yeah, long. Yeah, exactly. We're all we're all gonna die. That's what you have to look forward but to, some everybody. Of us are gonna die more than others. That's what you have to look forward to. Yeah. Ah, life is cruel. Anyway, uh, t- so this happened today. <laughs> so Kevin and I, I, I talked to you at like I don't know one o'clock to see if you wanted to do a show tonight, and so many things happened between. It's it's literally ridiculous that we don't we can just say let's do a show and we don't have to plan or share links or anything because there's so much no. going on. You just have to talk about what happened yeah. in the last six hours. It's exactly. Insane. Well, exactly. Well, yeah. Since we first talked, <coughs> it, he's been he's been found out to have been collaborating with Men in Black characters, which is <laughs> weird to me. Maybe he knows K or J. All right. So from the Washington Post, two business well, associates. Well, no, he doesn't know. He doesn't know Jay, does he? Because I mean, they don't allow black people anywhere near the president. So mm. he doesn't like them. Yeah, right. That's right. Um, okay. Two business associates of per- Trump's personal lawyer Giuliani have been arrested on campaign finance charges. Uh, I pretty much just said that. And are in custody Thursday, a spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan said. The two men who helped Giuliani investigate former Vice President Joe Biden were arrested Wednesday night in Virginia and charged with campaign finance violations, according to a person familiar with the charges. Your, your uh, audio's gone men. Has it? Okay. For you or for everybody in the chat? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I, well, certainly for me. Hmm. I don't know why that would be. But uh, I guess maybe I can close this. Maybe it's just pulling too much whatever. I don't know if that's any better now. Oh, it says... No. No, no it doesn't say poor connection. Huh, I don't know what to say. Oh, there you go. You're back. You're back. All right. Make sure my connections are solid. Anyway, yeah, basically these guys that were mentioned in the article we just saw got arrested because they... Well, they are citizens, so they can give money, and they've given money to a Trump, a pro-Trump... Um, what well, I'm surprised that they would be pro-Trump, given how fucking corrupt and they are. Kevin... Because he's so anti-corruption. Yeah, yeah. He's so anti-corruption. When it involves Joe Biden. Yeah, when it yeah, involves Joe Biden. It. Well, but also, I want to know, why did he bring up Elizabeth Warren with the, in the phone call with the Chinese then? I know. That's also weird. I don't know. Because mm, I... she's not even a businesswoman, so... Uh... I literally, there's no reason you would bring her up ever. Oh, by the way, Christy sounded fine for everybody except for you, Kevin. So definitely was a year problem. And shut the fuck up, chat. That's what Liz said. That's what Liz said. (laughs) Uh, Also, um, it was they gave money to Kevin McCarthy, who is the minority leader in the House. (laughs) And what they got busted for was trying to, but they did give money that, uh, according to investigators, came from outside the U.S. They were, I think they call it straw manning, or I can't, I forget, but they were like uh, being a front for other people's money and giving in their name to make it legal to some Republican, of course, uh, in order to influence him to get rid of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine or something. I don't know, but that's, um, and they were supposed to. Which is surprising, because didn't didn't they, oh, oh yeah, he did actually get rid of the, the um, ambassador to Ukraine. So it's almost like he's literally been paid, like he's a corrupt piece of shit or something. Very strange. Yeah, and the other thing Very about strange. this is these two were supposed to, I like, I don't know, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Tweedledum and Tweedledumber here, were um, supposed to testify before Congress, one today and the other one tomorrow. I don't know which one they are, uh, so I'm just going to treat them like one unit. And um, But they were... Gleb. The one on the left is Gleb, and the one on the right is yeah. Schwibblebub. But they were picked... So they... Those are their men in black names. Oh, that's their men in black names? Schwibblebub. Yeah, okay. it's, it sounds like an alien name. 
That's the joke I'm doing. So they were being... aliens. They look weird. <laughs> they they were being Apologies investigated. Apologies if anyone's out there thinking, oh, I, I look like that dude. Do I look weird? <laughs> Trust me. You now know how I feel when Tommy Robinson got released from prison. <laughs> Except you were at more basis, I think, for being offended because these guys look, you know, normal and to Tommy was, you know, he's an asshole. But I guess they are also corrupt, so maybe I shouldn't make a moral well, judgment. No, like they're that. all asshole. They're all yeah. criminals. Yeah. They're criminals. Yeah. Just, I mean. Okay. Uh, they were being investigated by uh, SDNY, the Southern District of New York. And instead of being uh, on their way to Washington, where they were supposed to give their testimony before Congress, they had bought one-way ticket, international tickets, and they caught him at the airport. Oh, just, oh, they got cock blocked at the last second. Yep. Oh. And now it's, no, what's well. interesting is that it was the Justice Department that authorized the arrest. So William Barr did not interfere with this arrest but also it was a southern district of new york it wasn't like it was you know so he didn't interfere in this arrest but yeah so this is a thing that happened today well that's rudy giuliani that, that surprises is... me it surprises me because rudy giuliani seems like such a straight shooter <laughs> why would he be involved with people like this that seems really peculiar yeah and i'm really glad that person whoever it was like retweeted that article from the third because now that becomes so much more salient in terms of like linking Giuliani and the plot and the Trump's yeah. quid pro quo. And he was basically running what Trump was doing because it wasn't just Giuliani. Apparently he's got like two other attorneys who sometimes appear on Fox that were involved with this, but I never hear their names, but let's just talk about Rudy Giuliani. He was running a shadow diplomacy outside of yeah. the government using in government resources and drawing on the reputation and the taxpayers funded aid to Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cuz this is the whole point. International diplomacy, the whole reason of have well, one of the reasons of having an embassy is obviously to help people in that country from your country to like repatriate if they get stuck or something, you know. Um or to help out legally if there's a problem. But the other thing is international diplomacy, right? Where you go you work through the embassy so that everyone's on the same page. If you if you have a dual situation like that, when the ambassador goes to speak to the Ukrainian president, he literally can't offer any advice or any solution to the president of Ukraine because he's not actually... He doesn't know no. what the president of America wants. He doesn't know what the American national policy is because you're not working through the fucking embassy. Mm -hmm. And Trump was so running that. So it's all pointless. This is it. He was running... Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Ridiculous. And he got caught. And, you know, what Ezra Klein yeah. was, it said, you know, just well, imagine what if the whistleblower hadn't come out and then just suddenly there was reports that Ukraine was conducting an investigation into Joe Biden's son. Yeah, and that exactly. was the first thing we'd heard about it. They almost yeah, got away but, with it. Almost, yeah. But I think one, the fact that he still has Giuliani as his lawyer, I think one thing that Trump said that we can definitely say is not true is that he does not own... He does not uh, hire the best people. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, sir. And New York scumbags send their people. They're not. They're not sending their best. Yeah. They're not sending their brightest. Here's. And when the... I say New York, I don't mean everyone in New York is a scumbag. I mean scumbags from New York, like right. Giuliani and Trump. Yep. We already covered this. That uh, Trump's calling McConnell. Oh, and there was also um, a really great photo. I don't know. Not just I... that, but he's ringing them up specifically about. Uh, 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 Republican senators who might be disloyal, but there's not going to be a vote there for ages. So I, I really don't know why he's. Well, what does he think can be got good can come from that? Uh, it's, oh, and it's big. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a freak. Is the point? And also, do you remember when the Hunter Biden thing first started, and there was a picture circulated? Of Donald, of so Joe Biden and his son and some random people on a golf course. Yes. And Donald Trump circulated I do remember that. This. Yeah. Well, guess what? I do. Yeah. And then, and then the most amazing um, uh, redemption arc in history, where Nickelback redeemed themselves <laughs> by DMCAing Donald Trump's tweet and getting yeah. it taken down. Yeah, that happened. Because they used like part of their song, which is amazing. Like, <laughs> in general, I'm not for DMCAing people. Especially when, like, it's obviously, like, a transformatory thing. It's sort of an abuse of that system. But it's funny, because Trump's garbage. So fuck him. 
Yeah, they just stole their music. They didn't transform the music. That was just straight up theft. And uh, no, that I, su- I suppose, but they could have had it silenced or whatever. Like clearly, the the images had been changed significantly. Yeah, but the and song. And it was like a two second clip anyway. So I mean, ugh, anyway. Fuck, fuck but I'm... yeah, okay. So the point being, yeah. Do you recognize this? Isn't he had? What didn't he have an adulterous affair? This guy over here. He did. He did. He yeah. did. Do you know Which who? Is... They said the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, that's Don Jr. and these are the two guys that, that are is. in prison right now. Out, but there is a guy in between them who looks vaguely normal, so like it's fine. Well, this it is. guy—it's like the de- it's like the devolution of man, like <laughs> from from human <laughs> to alien, the gradient. <coughs> We're back anyway, to men yeah. in black. So he's yeah. He's corrupt as fuck as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I wonder if Donald Trump will be tweeting out a Nickelback song. With About that this. Image, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah. And this guy is apparently a longtime friend of Don Jr.'s, and he runs in the big money donor circles of Trump world and uh, helps. What a surprise. Yes. Well, I think someone needs to look at, I think a Ukraine and <gasps> China need to look into yeah, Donald Trump. Yeah, an investigation. Yeah, they need to investigate them. Sorry, Definitely. sorry, everyone. So Kevin made me cry till my eyes, like tears came out of my eyes, and then my nose starts to run, and then I start to cough. So apologies for my froggy throat. It's all yeah. Kev's fault. <laughs> I, well, I, the, well, I get paid to make girls wet. Usually, <laughs> not, not in the eyes, but you know. But I think we should just look on. Yeah, let's have that nickel. I would love it if Nickelback brought their song out with this picture on it. That would be amazing. Yeah, they should do that. <laughs> That would be redemption arc complete. I don't think anyone yeah. would be able to rip on them anymore. No. Even though they do make shit music, it would still be like, I think they'd be off limits at that point. You'd be like, like no, respect. They're cool. Yeah. 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 Just don't make yeah, it please. Conti- yeah, continue to make your gut awful music and we'll just ignore you like you're not there. <laughs> but nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Tip, tip of the hat, good <sighs> sirs. There we go. Yep. Someone had done a handy job of labeling it for us <laughs> shady don <laughs> <laughs> nicknames um Lev oh. Parnas and Igor Fruman now I Fruman. am actually I watch Deadline uh, White House on the regular we're not going to play the clip because I don't want to get done for copyright but yeah Frank Fagluzzi suggests that Rudy and his gang could have been under legal electronic surveillance from law enforcement <laughs> And Giuliani oh, should be please. very worried today. <laughs> please say that's true. That would be amazing. Because uh, you know Giuliani was definitely, look, he's the kind of dumbass who would have been like, this is a quid pro quo. Do you understand <laughs> me, Ukrainian president man? I wish uh, to illegally use public funds of the American people in order to do something illegal. Uh, do Are we on the same page? Would be, uh, would be fun. I yeah. think emotionally we're not going to top this. I, uh, to be honest, I, it's, it's almost, I can understand why people think of it as like a kind of fatigue because I have gotten to the point with Trump where nothing, like it, it surprises me, but it doesn't shock me anymore. And yeah. so if it came out that he was literally wanking with horse manure, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me anymore. Nothing would be like, oh, well that's, that's, that seems too outlandish for him. Like he's literally engaged in weird shit with the Ukrainian president. Like what the fuck? He literally thinks you fucking acid wash, literally <laughs> acid wash computers mm-hmm. or something because he's fucking 90. Like, it's, you know. Anyway. I, yeah. Yeah. And so that's why if we just land on the hilarity of the idea of Rudy Giuliani being on electronic surveillance. I would hope so. That would be brilliant. Yeah. And then that, that hope. Be, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do you have anything else, though, before we go? I don't want to kick us off, but we've been going for, like, one thirty. so. Uh, we more? didn't even talk about Brexit, did we? Oh, all? my God. Okay, yeah, go. I just need to give my voice. I was reading a lot of no, news no, articles. That's, that's fine. Well, we do need an well, update. It's important. Happening. Yeah. Uh, the uh, this, In theory, there's supposed to be some progress made, although I will say about the Irish, uh, what he's called Taoiseach, the Prime Minister, basically, Um uh, Leo Varadkar is that he's a good speaker and he seems like a nice dude, but he's as full of shit as every other politician. <laughs> okay. Um, in the in the he he came out, like they've been having private talks today, him and and Johnson, 
um, and they said, oh, there's some progress being made, and we think there's a pathway to a deal, uh, which I was like, oh, okay, that's really interesting development, okay. Uh, and then he, then he listed off the things that are still to be done, and they're exactly the same as they always have been. <laughs> so we I agreed. don't know what progress, what progress has been made. What, you agreed to have tea instead of coffee at the meeting. Yes, like, yes. And which biscuits to have? It literally just went, well, yeah, but we've got to sort, yeah, there's been progress made, but we've got to sort out uh, the customs arrangements, the border in Northern Ireland, uh, the single market protections, the the levies and duties and stuff. And I was like, but that's exactly the list of things that's been there for the last three fucking years. What what progress has been made? What are we talking about? (laughs) So basically there's, well, uh, the, the ultimate conundrum is, as I stated in the last episode, so whatever deal the EU could agree to would never get through the Parliament. Mm-hmm. So it's basically irrelevant. But we're in for a fucking mad week next week here in Britain. Um, Parliament, as I said uh, last time, has been prorogued, but this time legally and legitimately, albeit that it's basically a pre-election publicity stunt anyway, but whatever. Um, they're going to have a Queen's speech, which basically sets out the... Uh, the government's like legislative program going forward but they know it's not going to get through so it's irrelevant um because they have a majority of minus 41 uh, and counting um so that's going to happen all week next week they're going to be uh, debating that and then there's a thing on thursday and friday is the european leaders meeting and parliament is going to be sitting on the saturday which it hasn't happened since 1982 oh uh, yeah there's going to be a saturday sitting uh, which in theory would be to vote on Boris Johnson's deal, albeit that that would be enormously unfair given that it would only have been agreed to on the Friday. So parliamentarians are supposed to read it on Friday night and then vote for it Saturday. What? Which is ridiculous. Uh, but we all know that's not going to happen anyway because there isn't going to be a fucking deal. Yep. So it would be, in theory, the government laying out what happens now. But the because the parliamentary uh, situation is such that the, part, the government doesn't have the authority of parliament in any real sense at all, albeit officially it still does because the vote of no confidence hasn't happened, but in reality it doesn't have the confidence of parliament. So uh, what can happen then is that the government isn't actually able to take what's called control of the order papers, which basically means setting the uh, the agenda in parliament for that day which the government normally controls just by dint of having the majority. But this government doesn't have a majority. And several times they've banded together to take control of the order paper and force the government to vote on things that they don't necessarily (laughs) want to vote on or debate things they don't Mm -hmm. want to debate. So what might happen is that they'll do the same thing on Saturday and possibly put forward a vote for a second referendum, which might. If the government come back and say, our policy is now no deal because we don't have a deal, and they put that to a vote in the Commons, it might happen, and so you might get a second referendum. But either way, there is not enough popcorn in the world for what Saturday will bring. What date is that going to be? Uh, the next Saturday, so not okay. tomorrow. Not yeah, yeah so a not, week from if, to next Saturday. Yeah, so like ten days away or whatever, nine days. Oh um, man, these episodes be, keep me on a you know every a every massive. episode's a cliffhanger. Yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. Because I don't, I genuinely, anything could happen. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know. But it's going to be amazing anyway. I can't mm. wait. Okay. Oh, we forgot to talk about Carl. Who cares? So just basically, there was, um, there was actually some campus that he was being invited to, and there had been issues of sexual assault well, on the campus. I believe it was Rice, wasn't it? Um, I forget now. I, t- I did my. I don't. Was it Rice? Oh no, it was in Tech. Was it in Texas? I thought it was Rice. Someone oh, okay. in the chat might know. Yeah, our chat knows everything. Anyway, um, the Republicans, the college Republicans, invite him to speak, and people saw. What's the surprise? Because he's on the center left. <clears> so why yeah. would they invite him? Mm. To speak? That's strange. Very interesting. Mm. The there was a a response, a reaction, and he got disinvited. And then they had a, <laughs> a, a like a talk about speech and free speech and hate speech on campus instead of having Carl. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah. and so he got uh, yeah. he got denied again because he's a piece of shit. Yeah, so it was his yeah. rape tweet comment that got him again. Yeah, which because apparently on the campus there'd been like uh, some issues with like sexual. Well, there are always issues with sexual yeah. assault, but specifically it's like a a hot topic. Yeah, given recent events or something, so it was quite a sensitive issue at the time. So people 
Lucky was seeing that maybe it's not best for him to be here. You know, but I'm sure he didn't play the victim at all. Orion Cooper says it was Rice. So oh, it was okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. They actually gave the link in the chat as well. Thank you. Well, we love our it's chat. Rice, is that in Texas? I don't know. I thought it was, but oh, actually, they got the timeline of. De- that's right. They had the timeline of Carl Benjamin's invitation and disinvitation. <laughs> I'll go through it then. You've got a screen share now then, because I, I oh, need okay. to see there. All right, hold on. I mean, I could watch it on the thing. That would mean having to go to your channel, and I'd feel a bit icky. <laughs> I don't know what to listen. To. Um, you're Womsy. You're Womsy with your I estrogen and things. I am. Ugh. Oh, I've got to really you. blow this up. I got to make it way bigger. You keep getting That's in my what way. Alright, we're making Sorry. the screen. Uh, okay, summer 2019, Rice Republicans decide to host Benjamin in the fall. Date is set based on a tour of universities that Benjamin is going on. September 25th, anonymous opinion posted on Thresher Facebook page. October 2nd, in their own words, published in print. Uh, October 3rd, Rice Republicans announce Benjamin visit on Facebook. October 8th, Rice Republicans announce event suspension on Facebook. (laughs) October 18th, originally planned date of Benjamin's visit, Rice Young Democrats free speech versus hate speech event. (laughs) The Democrats held a hate speech versus free speech (laughs) event on the day he was meant to come. (laughs) That's great. That is good. That's awesome. Because so instead of having like um, a really shit event, they actually ended up having like a worthwhile event. Yeah. Okay. Good for them. Yeah. And then the details are all laid out here. A talk of note actually took place instead. Good. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, yeah, Carl's reputation precedes him because he's scum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then the other thing, too, I saw this on Twitter. I think I can stop screen sharing with you now. What did you say about Lockyer from Boston? Twitter? I don't know. It's fun. Twitter. Twitter. It's fun to Chowder. share. Chowder. <laughs> I saw this on Twitter by Stig yeah. Abiel, maybe. It's the six stages of Brexit. No deal is an impossibility. No deal is hugely unlikely. No deal has to be a possibility in theory, but not in practice. No deal is a possibility. No deal is likely. There was never any other option than no deal. Yeah, and it's sort of 1984, the way that the Brexiteers have been like, no, we always said it was... Yeah. No, we we definitely always said... It's yeah. always been, we've always been at war with East Asia. I don't know where you're getting this Eurasia thing from at all. It's ridiculous. That's, unless you get the, unless you've read the book, that might be a, an oblique reference, but there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is. It's a private research institute and university in Houston, Texas. Yeah. That's okay. Rice, by the way. Okay. Not, not, Bre- not Brexit. <laughs> I was a little confused there. Like, yeah, I should probably. Did I, I fade out of it? In, I should probably have led in with that. With the, I'm going to pivot back to a thing we were talking about previously. Otherwise, this isn't going to make sense. It's you, in Houston, you, Texas. Yes, you just yeah. took the train tracks of our conversation and just sort of hopped the tracks back onto a prior previous conversation without actually doing well, the switching. Well, if it's good thing. enough for the American president to do it, <laughs> yeah. which he does constantly within his own answers to one question, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, then yeah, I, th- I feel like I'm okay. I feel like I can do that then. All right. He's given me the intellectual green light to go in and intellectually slaughter curds. Ooh. Whereas he's given an actual green, green light, light to actually slaughter actual curds. Mm. So. Yeah, dark. It's what did there. Dark, yeah, gallows humor. Which, I mean, you're usually supposed to do gallows humor about yourself. Like, gallows humor about other people is wrong. So, did you just call yourself out? Yes, I'm cancelling okay. myself. Okay, well, I'm glad we got to that point in the end of the show. We've been all waiting for you to get to that point, Kevin. So you are officially Well, it was a matter of time. self It was a matter of time. Yeah. All right. And on that self-cancellation bombshell, do you have anything coming up on your channel? Or did you have anything else you want to talk about? I just keep trying to quit this show. I don't know why. I think it's because we're getting on 145. I don't know why I'm so focused on the time tonight. Oh, wow. Okay. Um... It's not one forty-five in the morning. We've been going for Mike, an hour. Mike, Mike, Mike Bala or Bala or whatever sent me a thing. Hey, which he... I'll, I'll just screen share. I'll just screen share. Okay, it's fine. 
It's a, uh, you know, we asked for like fan art oh, ages right. ago and like no one sent any. Uh, Mike did. But you with and Mike it's... Bala, does he wish he was taller? Does he wish he knew a girl <laughs> that would call her? And would call her? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> how did we not come up with that sooner? Oh my God, yeah. I love that. Oh my yeah, God, how. <laughs> Yes, you have there to send three me. Rories now. I look so sexy in that picture. Well done, Mike. I like the unlike Kevin, who sometimes gets my head wrong. You did it spot on. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! No, you do a good job. I come love all on. your pictures. I think your Pulp Fiction no, one is one of my favorites. You, you get my head wrong. I mean, <laughs> well, it's a... you're like it's you're asking me to do. A, <laughs> that's what she said. Well, I was thinking more of the photoshopping, but you know, if you're offering. Honest, it seems like a silly thing head. to turn well, down. To... Fine, I promise. <laughs> I will. Uh, I know I said that last time, but you know it's different. Right, you have to send me. You have to send me your file of uh, all of your artwork since you're gonna. We're gonna be hosting on my channel for a bit, and uh, I will put them in the corner on a rotation, and we can add this to the mix. I need to take pictures where I don't look mental. <laughs> That's a realized now. <laughs> <laughs> what you put out into the public. Yeah, domain is what comes back at you, mate. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, Which is why you don't take your dick out in public. Okay. I've learned that in my life. <laughs> yes, and thank you to Mike. Well done. Yeah. Yes. Those... He usually sends me screenshots of him having crashed his uh, his um, digital car. No, not car, lorry. He plays a long-distance lorry game thing where he delivers stuff. Um I'm not going to kink shame him. It's his thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we make him laugh so much that he crashes, and he sends me screenshots of the amusing ways in which he crashes, and some of them are amazing. He, too, but he tips over, like, the side of a fucking motorway, and it's, like, on its back, a big fucking 16-wheeler. It's amazing. Uh, oh, um, so someone broke their penis. Oh, no. Uh, right. Also, um, uh, I want you to put yourself on... The, when were we talking about doing a Showgirls cover as well? Yes. Yes, we did talk about that. <laughs> I don't know how, but that image now is stuck in my mind, so we have to... And by we, I mean you. <laughs> well, no, you do it. I can't do that. Lazy I, fuck. I Jesus. Do the audio I put all this and work the... into this show. You don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I just do like the setup and the promotion and the audio. No, 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 no. I know it's you do great work because you come up with all the dick jokes, which is what we, people are really here for, let's face it. Yeah. They want your dick in their they, face. <laughs> they, they, they come for the dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So glad my mother can't work <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think I was asking you if there's anything on your channel. Did you answer that question? I didn't, and there isn't. Okay. Oh, by the way, people in the chat, t check out my mouse. Did you guys notice that my mouse changes colors as I go over things? Check it out. Look at that. Well, no. I, I didn't notice because I don't see color. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, my boy. <laughs> Uh, all right well enough of this gay banter as they say in monty python um i think all that's left to be said then is uh you guys should go to kevin's channel and subscribe to him although he has way more subs than me but that's okay i don't mind i i love our core base in our chat this is what i do youtube for i don't <laughs> you hate them i would to stop coughing i'm sorry everybody um i will probably do a show and again in the future that's all you're gonna get out of me yeah, tonight probably yeah, probably I'll do something in the future. Yeah. Um, oh, Cassiopeia wants precise. to plug. Cassiopeia wants to plug their Twitch. I don't know if you're a you're a mod, so yeah, you can go ahead and put a paste. I put a paste. You can paste a link to your site in the chat. You can acid wash a paste into the <laughs> yes. life. So thank you to the chat. Thank you to the. Um, I can't ever pronounce your name because it's so crazy. I have to look at it. Sorry, I just Dave. don't do. You have Dave. to to Dave. Yes, uh, the Yufio answer for your contributions. And thank you to people watching in the future who made it all the way to the end. Um, uh, I've been Christy. You guys have been awesome. Say uh, goodbye for me and goodbye. Oh, do we want to put Cog back on? We won't hear him. I'll turn him up, though, a little bit. You want to, does, does, him... does anyone care? Uh, but it's supposed to be like our outro song. <laughs> no, it's, it's a cool outro song. But at this point, like, I mean, is anyone still listening? No, they're all gone. Okay, it's just good. us. 
Say goodbye, Kev Kev. We're alone now. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anyone around. Say goodbye, Kev Kev. Children behave. <laughs> That's what the seven went to ground on. <laughs> Say goodbye, Kev Kev. Goodbye, Kev Kev. Bye, everyone.